coming at you live from MWEC. Tonight we've got Ball State University versus Michigan State University. Welcome to the Rift. All right, loading up here. We have I am Nightshade uh, and the rest of the MSU crew just stand. This should be a really exciting match. This is the first one uh, for the two of these teams. First night of the match. So, Ball State's looking good. They've uh, introduced a couple new uh, players to their lineup. Dre yeah, who's those? Dre in particular, one of my good friends, he's moved from uh, running the uh, secondary team to being the jungler for the primary. He was he shifted from support to jungler as well, so this is personally really? exciting for me. Yeah. Yeah, really exciting to see his debut here. Uh, pulling out the Zack, a very, very good pick right now in this particular meta. Uh, going ahead and rolling with that Aftershock instead on uh, Zack uh, over... Wow, that laugh is fun. Uh, yeah, going with the Aftershock on Zack. Uh, should be interesting to see how he matches up here against Cheney on the uh, Kha'Zix. Who, uh, personally, I think is, is going to give him a run for his money. Just, uh, the uh, constant invades, it's really going to test how well... BSU can keep up with warding and keeping track of Cheney as he's uh, running through their jungle. I so, th I think that um, you have two very different comps, based mm -hmm. based primarily around the jungler. <laughs> you see, you've got uh, you've got one tank for each side, and it's important to have those tanks. But BSU decided to put theirs in the jungle, while MSU decided that they wanted a tank in the top lane. And so you're gonna basically see. Tank versus Assassin in the jungle matchup, and then Tank versus Bruiser in the top lane matchup. And so that's where all the excitement is really going to be at, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. And because the game patterns are going to be so much different, and really what we're going to be... The impact they're going to be able to have on the lanes, and being able to take uh, advantage of the early uh, Rift Herald, um, which one is going to take that first, I think is really going to define uh, a lot of what we'll see here in the first 20 minutes as well um just with the amount of impact you can have by being able to pick up that rift scuttler or that rip herald that's going to mean a lot for these teams um and i i would actually expect wall state to be playing around their bot side especially with zach starting in the top that means he's once he hits uh level three he'll be able to be down here at the bot side so and he can he can do his clears fairly healthily as well. So we'll see if it looks like uh, BSU is being very careful trying to let the lane shove towards them. So I wouldn't be surprised if we end up seeing that happen here in the next few minutes once uh, once Dreyer makes his rotations. And here we have an early invade as we were talking about with Cheney coming into the top side. Going in on Dreyer. Gonna have to run. Meanwhile, on the bot side, quite a bit of aggression coming out of serotonin. Jerry Pops being fairly low. With Ball State, they're gonna be trying to scale up into the late game. They have a team comp that's well suited for that. Oriana outscales the rise, if barely. Tristana is a much more powerful pick than Kalista. Absolutely. And as hey. long as they can keep the Renekton from letting the Orn overtake him, the only answer that MSU has in the scaling game is not gonna be. Uh, quite as relevant as they want it to be. Yeah, I agree. I, I mean, Orn excels in so many ways uh, that, that make it difficult for a Renekton to really stay relevant in the late game. Um, most, uh, most notably, using the uh, Call of the Forge God, the amount of CC that you can pump out with that one ability and being able to cast it from such a long range gives you such an is such a huge advantage especially in those late game team fights where you're looking to uh get in with the Callista um and protect her. That's why I'm actually I'm actually kind of uh interested. Ooh wow. Nice early game coming out of Dreyer gonna pull back on I am Nightshade. Not gonna quite pull him down, but they will take flash and so we can probably expect Dreyer to be clean back through here soon. Looks like Lobok is his has this uh, lane to himself for a little bit. Dreyer's immediately got that pressure up, and that's something you need to do as a jungler. He's got it going faster than Kha'Zix, and so Kha'Zix is gonna need to overtake that level six. Exactly. And, ooh, wow, Celsius being taken very low, uh, having to get out of there. Um, or playing those fights really well. Extremely well. Using that Bellows Breath to be able to avoid the uh, CC. 
that comes out of the Renekton. Ooh, it looks like uh, Cherry Pop's gonna have to hop himself out of there. Get out of the grass of Serotonin. He's uh, been really spot on with these hooks right now. That's two and one, if I'm not mistaken. Two, two landed, one's missed, and for yeah. firing them blank. That's very, <laughs> very good record. He's definitely an exciting... He's an exciting support to be able to watch, especially when he's playing on this rush. He fe he seems so comfortable playing this pick too. And these are these are shots that he should be making because he doesn't have any sort of follow up. He doesn't have any way to guide them into the hooks, and yet he's making them and he's landing them. That's personally, I find that quite impressive. Extremely impressive. And if you want to take a look over at the mid lane as well, uh, so we were talking a little bit about this matchup and how it looks in the late game, how the Oriana does scale a little bit harder than the Rise. The only thing is, uh, I mean, there, there's a reason that right now Ryze is a much higher contested pick in the LCS than Orianna is. Primarily with A, his ult, right, being able to escape so quickly, you have the interaction with Tony just being able to take yourself out of there and not take any damage. Um, on top of just the mass amount of uh, early game damage that you can put down, and the uh, wave clear to be able to shove Orianna underneath that tower, Bloodrock is having a difficult time actually being able to stay up. Uh, I mean, you, you can see just from there, I am Nightshade being tear through minion waves. Absolutely. Uh, the thing is with mid lane, the meta is primarily playmaker. Playmakers first, and tanky champions that deal tons of damage next. You're, you're going to see the Azir pick, you're going to see the Zoe pick. Uh, yeah. Rise and Malzahar, and all of them really just lock down and make sure that they're making the play for their team with that unsealed spellbook. Yeah, the unsealed spellbook is, is if you don't have a a, a rune in mind, a, a, a keystone that you think will really go well, just go unsealed spellbook. Because if anything, uh, you get halfway through the game and you decide that a, the teleport that you took isn't exactly what you want, um, you can you can transfer that into uh, taking barrier. Or um, if you find that you're uh, able to pull off a lot of uh, aggression. Uh, grabbing an ignite later once uh, the damage on that actually pumps up isn't a bad pick either. Wow, Jupiter Jug's taking quite a bit of damage from that uh, harass from Celsius. And Orn is now out of mana, which means Renekton is free to harass that lane as he wishes. He's already 10 CS up, and this means he just wins the lane outright. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's really great that Celsius I mean, knows that he can take advantage of that. Um, and really under it seems like he really understands this matchup well. He knows uh, when when Renekton's weak or strong points are, when he should be able to go in on the Orn, and how he should be taking these fights. And so I'm I'm really impressed in such a dip, what can be a very difficult matchup. If you watch how he postures himself, he's doing it in a way that he's in front of the minions anytime that Orn wants to trade, but if Orn tries to go in and attack, he's going to be pushing the wave. When Orn pushes right. the wave, he's going to have to back because there's no way he can actually take the minions without incurring some sort of retaliation from Renek. Right. That kind of wave control is fantastic. Also, that was an early dragon taken by just uh, just who we're, we're, we're calling Roger and uh, Serotonin. Um, and, and that's another reason that uh, we didn't quite touch on this one, but Callista is an extremely strong pick right now. With the amount of damage that you can put out and how quickly you can pop people, um, especially if you have a team conflict draft around yourself. Ooh, Celsius is getting out of a tricky gank. Gonna have to uh, double dash away. Chaney walking away with nothing out of that, but uh, it's still establishing more lane pressure. Uh, looking down at the bot side, we do have quite a bit of damage being put down onto that tower from Cherry Pops. And they these guys are able to back off. You said that it was going good because it did get that lane pressure, but I would disagree because now they know exactly where Cosmic is and they're able to use it to push up into this tower. Dreyer is coming in for the lane gang because they don't know where he is, but they know where their jungler is. Yeah, I agree. Wow. Uh, yeah, no, I will absolutely give you that one. You're right on that. Ooh, wow. Uh, damage being put down. Uh, Turnaround is fantastic. Callista is coming was off amazing. with two kills. TP All right, is going in. in on Dreyer. Got TP from the top lane. Ooh, TP from the mid lane. I am Nightshade comes in. Are they going to be able to clean up these little bloblets? Yeah, they're going to be able to clean them up real well. I am Nightshade picking up the kill there on Dreyer. Uh, that was a fantastic play from the side of MSU. Absolutely. 
their coordination is going really well together right now. How they very quickly took out Janna was very impressive. They were right. able to take that and then use that to turn a 2v2 into three kills. Exactly. And, and see, that's one thing that's really important to understand, especially in a lot of these matchups where you do have this sort of all-in uh, all bot side with the Thresh and the Callista into a heal lane, right? Take out the healer first, then go in on the damage. Because, I mean, the healer's not going to have very much armor, they're going to be squishy, you can pop them quickly, they're not going to fight back, uh, and then you can turn around and turn onto the damage. Because the amount of time that you're going to spend taking out that damage while it's being healed is going to be enough to take you out. So that was a really smart play from Roger and Serotonin. That was that was fantastic. And they did that by exhausting Tristana, ignoring her, going straight for the Janna. Yeah, exactly. Well done. <laughs> I mean, the solo queue thing is always uh, get the ADC, get the ADC, but like you don't always have to do it. Not always. All right, and we traded bot side turrets, so. Uh, the early gold, however, going over to the side of MSU. Uh, now we have the lane swap, Serotonin and Roger being up here in the top side. They're going to try to turn around and take this top tower as well. You did mention the Rift Herald, and this is exactly why they picked the Callista. She has phenomenal uh, siege potential, uh, objective control, and she's basically a stronger smite. She's going to be able to, if they can survive this, they're going to be able to take that Rift Herald. Wow, speaking of which, yeah, they survived that. They are going to have to run away, though, because they have uh, Lodvok coming in, trying to clean up what uh, what Celsius couldn't. Oh. However, it turns into a... Wow, all right. Action. Cherry Pops going off, going to end up popping uh, I Am Nightshade, but there's still three members of MSU in the top side. All right, Jerry going in for a little more action. He's not going to get anything here. But, they're just trying to hold on to this turret as long as they can. Uh, that was a well-executed fight out of nowhere. And exactly like you were saying, so what they're going to do, they're going to take this topside turret and they're going to turn around and go straight for this Rift Herald because they have so much control right now. They're going to so lead to another tower for them, and so they'll have all three towers cleared before Fall State has even gotten their second one. Right, exactly. It, it's interesting because I've seen sort of this this uh, same tempo before. Um, in uh, a few games that happened uh, last year, there were some less experienced teams that had tried to take outer turrets, and uh, they took the outer turrets. It was great. They were done before 15 minutes, but they had actually ignored their farm. And so what happened was, yeah, have an enemy team. You know, uh, there's Rupert going over uh, onto Cheney, able to roam back to the middle lane. That will be uh, most likely attempting to pick that up. And is it health? Health. Um, but no, I guess I'm I'm impressed with MSU's uh, ability to uh, not only take these objectives, but also being mindful of uh, keeping and maintaining lanes and making sure that uh, nothing is really happening. Again, that impressive objective control uh, coming from uh, coming from Roger. All right, clearing out a little bit of vision for themselves. Serotonin uh, trying to clear up as much as he can. They are preparing. The, it looks like they are preparing to uh, make something happen mid. Uh, Roger will uh, back currently. He is sitting on. Uh, let's see, gold differentials. Ah, oh, well, at any rate, uh, there is currently a 3,000 gold lead uh, in the favor of MSU right now, which means that there's going to be a lot more being put onto this uh, uh, to Roger on this Ballista. Uh, already picked up a Bork for himself, uh, has completed Zerker trades, uh, and on top of that, already has completed. Deal, so he's gonna be a demon in these fights. All the gold's on him for sure. He has a 50 CS difference on MSU. Hey, if I can cut in here real quick, Call of Forge God coming out, teleports coming in from I Am Nightshade. The hook will go wide. Uh, Phenomenal disengage. Yeah, that was great. They just did it. Nope, we're backing out. But, oh, it looks like Celsius is going in. Won't be able to pick up anybody. It takes the entire team of MSU extremely low. They're going to have to back out instead. Cherry Pops is coming in. Dreyer is getting ready to go out. Oh, 
Wow, Cheney just gonna jump right on top of Cherry Pops. And there is the Rift Herald coming out. They are good. This is where they try to go to take uh, mid tower. They backed off the dragon because they knew that there was absolutely no way that the S tier can contest that right now. Going for the subjective is huge for them. Now they can just turn back onto the uh, dragon and take that from themselves. Well, the advantage they, they have is incredible. Yeah, There's absolutely. no stopping them right now. They're able to easily take this money and this gold and turn it into objectives. They got the towers, they've got the Rift Herald. They're about to take Infernal Dragons. And you have this is why you should always ban the Callista. Force coming in. Trace coming in the air. Kelsey is going down to the team of them. Looks like uh, BSU is going to go ahead and disengage. Dre are having to run for himself. They can't be trying to take these fights. At this point, BSU has put themselves in kind of a position here. Um, I, personally, I don't think that there was enough attention being paid to the bot side um, in, in trying to let that Tristana scale. And so now you have this massive monster in Roger who is running around in this Callista, able to weave himself in and out of fights, especially with the uh, lockdown CC that you have from both the Thrush and the Rise, and able to just uh, destroy anybody that ends up walking through there, especially since Celsius still hasn't completed a full item yet. So the main tank from the side of BSU still doesn't quite have anything that he can really offer these team fights, besides, you know, raw damage. Uh, Renekton's that... gonna trans... Uh, he's going to go from being this sort of bruiser to a split pressure role. And so he is not able to effectively split push. The real tank is going to be Dreyer, and he's getting to that point. He just needs to be have a good setup for him to go in on. And we've seen Lotbox ultimates. That was a phenomenal ult. He has this engage. He just needs to find the right setup for them to go off on. Yeah, hopefully they can find that soon. It does look like MSU is uh, gearing up to take yet another turret. Uh, setting up around this mid lane, just would, looking for the vision, trying to spot anybody out. Um, it's interesting the way they're working this comp as a uh, sort of uh, pick comp, especially since you have the Kha'Zix. Wow! Uh, they will take that pick off on to Spooky. Oh, they have Zack ultimate back, which will drag Serotonin down to his death. Uh, MSU having disengaged Jupiter Jugs coming in uh, will end up guiding the rest of them out. They're sure uh, that was trade -off. Trade -off. No, it, it wasn't. The thing is that with uh, them able to take Thresh, they're able to take this bad situation and they're tur turning it into one that actually works out for them. That's a good trade because they're shutting down Thresh, who is, has a higher gold value right now than Janna does. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, what I'm saying is it's a great trade. It's a, it was a great play. Ooh, Dreyer might be in trouble here. Jumps out, grabs the uh, shield from Oriana and runs out. Um, that was iffy. Right now, they don't have quite enough vision sitting in this boss side. They do have two bushes warded, but they're not able to find Chaney quick enough to really uh, track him right now, so it's kind of an issue. With his um, ultimate, he's able to go invisible as he goes through the brushes, and so that's making him very hard to spot out and catch, and so he's able to get vision on them, and they can't see him for the most part. He's using this to his advantage really well. He's just picked up both of their buffs. He's doing a really good job with just exhibiting this sort of pressure that a jungler needs to show. Right, exactly. And that was, again, part of what we were talking about earlier when we were saying that uh, this Kha'Zix would just... Uh, uh, his entire objective here is to try to uh, choke Dreyer out of any resources he could possibly get. They're toning will continue to clear out this vision. And this is another thing, again, uh, that I'm always impressed with some of these teams is their ability to, go to, to manage vision. Um, and understanding the importance of uh, maintaining those those deep vision wards, but also clearing out enemy vision, right? Um, if you look at a lot of high level teams, some, uh, most of the time that is what will, uh, they it decide so many games, right? Because everybody's competing at, at largely the same level, right? And uh, when you control the vision like that and understand the macro game, it's, it's, it means a lot for your team. Yeah. And one of the most important things is once you transition to the mid game, people have to push up the objective. Like, they're going to push up the waves and say, hey, there is 20 minions in this wave. We have slow pushed up. You have to come get this. And for them to be able to do that, they need to make sure that they have this good vision. 
and once they get this good vision and they set up these slow pushing waves, they're gonna take uh, the members of Ball State and they're gonna distract them so they can set up for things like Baron for other dragons. Ooh, and looks like we've got a fun bush happening here. Serotonin running in. Well, end up getting caught up in the Oriana hole. He flies in, ends up being called back uh, in the Callista ultimate. Will end up being taken out. Uh, oh, not quite yet. Callista got taken out. Wow, I'm pretty rushing in. Like, got Serotonin getting extremely low. Will end up being caught by Celsius. The stopwatch coming out from Jupiter Chug will end up being taken out as well. Celsius on the chase ends up taking down yet another one. Nightshade falling and Chaney. There is an ace. An ace uh, for Ball State. That was, wow, that was, that was very well played. And the Oriana ult just ripped through the three people that were first there. And by the time that uh, Horn and Rise were able to get into that fight, as well as Kha'Zix. There was just nothing they could do. They had such low health values because of the well set up Oriole. It made the fight very difficult for them to play, and disengaging would have probably been the best option. See, and I think BSD is kind of getting wise to some of these things. This is the third time that, uh, that Michigan has tried to set up a pick like that, right? Um, part of the problem there was that they found uh, that BSU is actually starting to wise up and group up more than they had been. Um, and so now they know, okay, listen, don't face check a bush. If we find it, let's sack up first, follow up the Oriole ultimate, and we'll be able to pick up a lot of these members. Because the problem with a pick comp is that you're extremely squishy. Other than the uh, most of these members will be extremely easy to pick up if they'd like to. And he, oh, also, the uh, when you're coming to a pick comp like this, wow! Well, you don't have the low targets. Like, you have to select your targets. It's not like Oriana. Oriana can just come in and shockwave your entire team. That was phenomenal. Right. And what surprises me is that even through all of the damage that they've been taking, Michigan State still continues to uh, walk up to these these team fights in a large group. Um, knowing full well that Oriana is going, or that Oriana is going to be right there with that shockwave. A lot of damage being pumped out by Cherry Pops and, and taking this turn for his team. And they will get out. They need uh, to fall back so that they can defend that inhib tower before Ball State comes running in. Absolutely. Ball State's choosing to disengage here. They're going to move up to the top t uh, outer towers. They're pushing this lead they have, and they're doing a great job of it. Absolutely, and it's funny because they only came up with this lead within the last uh, five minutes uh, through all of these really well executed team fights, understanding that hey, we're gonna get picked off here uh, with Lodvok being such a huge carry right now. Um, they're able to do so much with yeah, again the lead they got here just in the last five minutes. Their because does... remember, ten minutes ago they were down three thousand gold. Yeah, and their team does scale better, so they're going to be finding themselves in a lot more advantageous situations than they've had up to this point. Exactly. Uh, let's see what that transitions to here. Uh, looks like Cherry Pops can continue to kind of farm up a little bit in his jungle. Uh, some wars being placed. As far as uh, items being built right now, we do have the uh, Rune Hurricane and a Sterix Gauge actually coming out for Roger. Uh, on the opposite side, Cherry Pops actually has his uh, Adi and a completed static shiv, so that is why he is able to pop these turrets as, as quickly as, as he is right now. He's getting to that tipping point. Um, that uh, uh, really, really scary uh, three item spike that Oriana's, or that Tristana's get. Um, and so it's gonna be interesting to see how Michigan State decides to handle that, how they decide to take care of that threat that is Cherry Pops. And he already has significantly higher DPS than Kalista just because of his item choices. So we're going to be able to see if Dreyer can come in and he can tank for Cherry Pops, he's going to find that Ch Cherry Pops can do a lot more for the team than Kalista can right now. Yeah, exactly. And uh, using this to their advantage, they're coming in for the inner tower up top. Cherry Pops doing a lot of work with this thing. They're going to get to half health. Can Hopefully they can take it down all the way. Ooh, the... Uh, Hook lands, Serotonin trying to run, the tower will go down, pulled back by Roger. BSU uses this chance to disengage, they took the tower, they took what they wanted, and now they're getting out. 
they need to start grouping up so that they can fight these more object uh, these objectives a lot more quickly and respond to these threats that BSU are making. And see, part of this part of the problem that MSU is having right now is they're still they're still approaching these fights as we're gonna pick off one person, but they are not actually landing the CC onto the targets that they need to because of the really big tank that Dreyer is for BSU. He's always standing in front of the carries. A fantastic position from him. Yeah, they're not going to be able to hit are on point this game. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, I mean, because Serotonin hasn't been able to hit a hit on a carry in the past uh, seven minutes. Since that first team fight in uh, Blue Side, Blue Jungle. So, and if they keep that up, it's going to be really difficult for MSU to really keep up. Because they're, again, their strong point has been pick up the carry and then dive in on the rest of the team. They haven't been able to do that in a while. So, right now they're sitting, now they have the uh, 3,000 gold deficit. So, very well executed right now from uh, Ball State. Looks like, oh, and again, what you were talking about with the split pump, uh, split push, Celsius on the bot side, gonna be making his way up to that bot side tower, creating a lot of pressure, and splitting up the side of. Uh, Michigan State forcing them to uh, spread themselves out. Generally, the strategy is when you split push, you're supposed to let the other lanes push to distract them from taking these towers. But I'm thinking they're going to group and make sure that they you or take advantage of the fact that Renekton is pushed up without being considered a threat. Absolutely. Your Call of Forge God does come land. Celsius uh, now sitting on the front line. The hook does land. Zach's on way too far away from the team. They have to get him in there ASAP. But Jana Ultimate does come out and does a lot of healing for the side of PS2, followed by the redemption. Redemption Looks like comes in before Cossix can assassinate his target. Alright, two members left, one member falls. Uh, Roger ends up falling under Dreyer. Now it's just I Am Nightshade left being popped by the might of Cherry Pops right now. Wow, this is not looking good for MSU. This has got to be an inhibitor, at the very least. I'm expecting the, the game to end. You've got five, uh, you have five members here sitting uh, in your base, right? Uh, they're absolutely taking the inhibitor. I don't think they'll end up taking the uh, enemy tower yet. They know that members are going to be coming up here in the next 20 seconds, and I don't think they're completely confident in their ability to be able to take those towers just yet. So, ooh, Celsius being ooh. caught up by Serotonin. Uh, he's going to have to try to dash you can't away. can't get cocky like that. That's going to end up getting you caught out. At this point, it seems like they're, yeah, just being cocky. Ooh, the uh, Orianna ultimate uh, shockwave coming out onto Serotonin. Uh, just to slow him down a little bit and give Celsius a little bit of room. Continues running for his life as Chaney tries to chase him down. Doesn't pick up anything, but uh, yeah, getting a little bit cocky. Staying around. Like, hey, yeah, we just took three to two towers from you. What are you going to do? I mean, a little that bit of BS, almost, but... That almost cost Renekton his life, and it could have transitioned into a Baron kill. He's a very big frontline member, and if they don't have him, then there's almost nothing to stop them from getting on the Tristana and the Ori after uh, Dreyer tries to initiate. I think at that point he was kind of like, it's okay if I do this. Um, I mean, he does still have his teleport available, so we can't really ignore that. Uh, and on top of that, Everyone on the side of MSU was a little bit spread out. I'm not trying to justify the BM, but uh, I think he does have some tools available to him. Uh, they're all grouped up right now, but if he wanted to, after this Baron call, ooh, Dreyer attempting to go in will end up missing sticky arms going wide. And I know that's not what that ability is called, but it's just so much fun to say it. All right, yeah, they're gonna go ahead and stop this Baron. They're gonna be able. PSU can do a lot of damage. To Baron simply because of Cherry Pops being so fed right now. Call uh, of Forge God does come out. We'll end up landing on two members. I am Nightshade being taken very low. Uh, Celsius steps into the backside, tries to find Shane. He doesn't find it, but he does find uh, Saraton who does end up falling. Jupiter Chugs running for his life as well. It looks like Roger will end up falling too. Underneath Dreyer. Uh, and the entire team of BSU, this is the third team wipe where all five members of BSU survived. This is the third team wipe, this game. That teleport is not something that I want to 
DLC, we were you could have used it once the minions were pushed up to tank the tower, and that could have been cause for them to end the game, but this is going to lead to a tower at most. Uh, if you look back at that old fight though, that was very well played. Now the reason that they were able to ace that is because when Tristana hit the uh, bomb on to Rise, Rise had teleported out, he used his Zhanyas, and he thought he had escaped. They are well, going to be able to it. We'll play it on the side of uh, we'll play it on the side of Ball State. Those were some very good yeah. ultimates. Those were very good plays by them. Uh, you know what? A really good teamwork coming out from them. I, I would yeah. say that that was both impeccable teamwork as well as impressive uh, playmaking by Lotvok. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was uh, yeah. Huh. Well, hey, I guess we'll see what they do in uh, round two. Can they keep the ball rolling, or uh, will they end up giving MSQ one in this one? Uh, we'll find out. So, uh, hey, thanks for watching this with us. Uh, stick around. We'll be right back in five minutes. All right, guys?